you know, we started in 2017 and we were going to do a futures product back then um, because we couldn't figure out uh, Bitcoin custody. The solutions like Gemini and Coinbase, they weren't uh, ready to take on investment fund clients back in 2017. Um, now, we didn't get there in 2017. The regulators uh, just struggled with uh, the asset class. But over time, they became more comfortable with the idea that, you know, in an investment fund vehicle, this makes sense. And so by the time we started working on this again last year, um, we were we were able to point to products in the market that were closed end structures that trade on the exchange. And there are a few in the States that are pretty large, but the, the price in, the price experience for investors wasn't good because they don't have the ETF market makers to keep the price close to the actual net assets. And so um, we were able to uh, prevail upon the regulators to approve our ETF as we proved out the liquidity of the Bitcoin market. I mean, that's something that when you start to talk to the government about this and they, there's so much they need to learn about because they don't have the, default assumptions, you know, it trades on the New York Stock Exchange, therefore I don't ask any more questions. We had to actually go through in detail and say, listen, you know, here's this market, look how deep it is, look how liquid it is. We could have an ETF that takes in hundreds of millions of dollars a day and we're not gonna move the price around. Nobody's gonna get in front of this, the way that we trade and settle it at Gemini. You know, our products are using the same reference price as the futures are uh, on the CME. So CME futures ETFs will be you know, tracking the same index price, but they'll have all the roll costs of the futures, whereas we just hold physical Bitcoin in our fund. But it was a back and forth with our regulators. I imagine the same thing's happening in the US. Um, we're lucky here in Canada that we could explore these issues uh, with the regulators in an open dialogue without kind of people feeling they're stuck in their positions. Sometimes it feels like that kind of narrative is going on um, in some countries as they talk about this. And we were able to find a solution where we were able to, to work with market makers because it's a whole industry that comes together for this right we got bank market makers who have to quote on the etf for investors to buy and sell from they need to use the futures to take the risk off the table so that the price is accurate we need to, to figure out custody we have to figure out how to price our product how to face the counterparty all of those infrastructure pieces came together um and um so we were very happy to have bitcoin in february and then ether our ether etf in April, and now our new fund, which holds both of those in one uh, ETF, which is the first of its kind to be multi crypto. Um, and so Canada's kind of ahead of the curve on this in some ways, but um, it may just be our approach and the style of conversation between issuers and regulators that, that makes us kind of lucky in that regard. I don't think fundamentally, based on the news I read, that the actual issues and concerns are really any different between any of the governments. They want to make sure that this stuff is, you know, real, it's here and it's legitimate. Um, but I think to your point, um, Anthony, it's getting harder to say no, right? Because when you when you ask that question, you get a legitimate answer from somebody who's done the homework. It's it's really hard to point at that these days and say this isn't a real thing. It was it was kind of easier back before 2017 when it was much newer back then and and you didn't have the futures and you didn't have adoption by big no. banks and you didn't have adoption by, I mean, you have a nation state calling it legal tender. How do you say no? How do you say something's not real when that's happened, right? You have been listening to the Innovators Behind Disruption, a podcast series brought to you by Evolve ETFs. Remain educated, be informed, sign up for our newsletter and learn more at evolveetfs.com.